Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about something that the aftermarket and the OEM brake manufacturers likes to advertise, which is brake caliper rigidity and brake caliper stiffness. Uh, this is something that is a topic of discussion because it is a feel preference. It's a preference uh, based on the feel of the driver uh, and braking confidence, which is difficult to quantify. But I wanted to try and talk about it in this video. So here we have the DC2 Type R caliper. I modeled it uh, to uh, very close to the actual caliper. The majority of the dimensions are the same. There are some detailing uh, differences between this model and that of the actual caliper, but they don't really add any more value in terms of the simulation that I'm about to run. Next. We also have the TL Type S Brembo calipers. This is a two piece design that is bolted together with four pretty large bolts that are 12 millimeters in diameter uh, Allen socket head cap screws. And lastly, we're going to take a look at the Genesis Brembo track pack calipers, which is a monoblock design. Uh, it is a single piece of aluminum and I've modeled it to the best of my abilities. It is close enough for the simulation and it's gonna give us a general idea of the differences between all these three calipers. So what is, what is it that I'm gonna about to show is something called finite element analysis. We are going to fix the caliper in the way they're mounted. So these two mounting holes are gonna be fixed and we're gonna apply a pressure um, and force that is going to be applied at the piston and reacted by the two sides um, that clamp onto the other side of the uh, pads. What we're gonna do here is maintain a constant force between the calipers, uh, between the different types of calipers and the different versions. Uh, the force is gonna be maintained to be the same, but the line pressure is gonna vary based on the piston area that is unique to each one of these calipers. So let's jump into the simulation. What we're going to do is take a look at how much the calipers deflect when you apply a 1900 pound uh, force into the caliper, which in this case, in the, with a DC2 Type R caliper, equates to about 494 PSI of brake line pressure. Okay. So we, uh, this has already been done. Um, I already did everything. What we're gonna look at is the displacement. So how much does this caliper flex? Okay, this is a very exaggerated view. Of course, the caliper doesn't actually look like this uh, once you apply this amount of force, but this is a 10 times uh, version of what the actual displacement will be. The colors here go from zero in the blue. The dark blue means there's no movement at all, no deflection. And as you go through the rainbow to the red, it is the maximum deflection at the very corner here of the caliper. Okay, the very corner here uh, shows a maximum displacement of 0 0.3646 millimeters. This is about you know just a bit over a third of a millimeter it doesn't seem like a lot but when you are braking and you feel this amount of uh, deflection in your caliper you're going to know as the driver you're going to feel differences when you compare that to the other calipers so let's take a look at the other calipers so on the tl type s it is a bolted design uh, two pieces put together and I've applied the same uh, force and it is being applied at the two um, pistons on the one side and then the other it's being reacted by the other two pistons on the other side. So if you remember what we looked at last time, this caliper deflects a maximum of 0 0.1681 millimeters. This is less than 50% of the deflection of the DC2 Type R steel cal the sliding calipers. Okay, 
this is a big difference and as the driver you're going to feel this difference and what i'm going to talk about later how what this difference translates to in terms of pedal travel so yeah at the mounting points there's very little deflection and as you go throughout the caliper it deflects more and more and the only thing that is holding these two halves together is the four bolts so aftermarket companies um, will try to incorporate more than four bolts sometimes they will have six and sometimes they will incorporate bridges in between uh, where the pads uh, sit to give the caliper additional stiffness so what is what does the monoblock look like let's take a look at the genesis monoblock calipers And where instead of looking at stress, we're going to take a look at the displacement. Very similar story. The very the highest deflection portion of the caliper is right at the very edge here. It's deflected 0.1163. This, you know, is a less than a uh, less than a third of what the DC2 Type R caliper has deflected, and it is another 30% reduction of deflection than that of the TL Type S calipers. So what this means is that as you, as the driver, when you depress the pedal, the brake pedal, this caliper is going to deflect less at the same clamping force that you can apply to the brake discs. Okay. And what that means is that you won't have to push the brake pedal down as far. The actual travel will be significantly less uh, than that of the DC2 Type R calipers. People talk about braking confidence, and I think this is a big part of where that comes from, is that immediate feel. When you step on the brake pedal, the car should slow down as soon as you apply force onto it. You don't want something, uh, you don't want a brake pedal that you have to step down really far into getting very close to the floorboards before the vehicle starts stopping. And I think this is, where the braking confidence and the rigidity really add to a braking system is that the monoblock design and a large aluminum bolted caliper design like the TL Type S is going to offer more than 50% uh, less reduction, or sorry, more than 50% reduction in brake caliper deflection for the same load, for the same clamping force. Um, this caliper, because of the larger piston area, will also require less line pressure to uh, to achieve the same uh, braking force. And there you have it. This is the reason why I went with a monoblock caliper design, and it is good to show it in terms of quantitative data and try to justify why the monoblock designs are superior to the um, bolted design and or the sliding caliper design so some companies out there will mention that their calipers offer the same stiffness uh, as a monoblock even though they use a bolted design that is possible that is entirely possible and it is totally based on a case-by-case -case basis okay if this caliper is put in comparison with a another bolted design with more bolts uh, than that of the TL Type S using six bolts instead of four and incorporates a bridge in the middle here, it's possible that it will deflect a lot less than that of the TL Type S and or if it may even match or exceed that of the uh, current TL, uh, current Genesis Brembo calipers shown here. It's possible, but uh, for the price difference, these calipers are about five, six hundred dollars on eBay. Uh, although the listings have been dwindling uh, since I made videos and since other people have started using these calipers on their vehicles. So get them while you can. And uh, what this translates to, this uh, deflection number translates to uh, in the DC2 Type R of 0.36 millimeters uh, deflection, it translates to about 14 millimeters of uh, brake pedal travel with a one inch uh, mass of cylinder and a four to one brake pedal ratio. That is about 14 millimeters of play that's gotta that's gotta happen 
you have to depress the pedal 14 millimeters more to accommodate for the uh, 0.36 millimeters of caliper deflection. Uh, this is for both calipers. So, of course, you have two calipers on the vehicle, on the front end of the vehicle. So, when you compare that to the Genesis Brembo calipers, you, you go down to about 5 millimeters. The amount of uh, brake pedal travel to make up the 0.116 millimeters of brake deflection is only about 5 millimeters. So, that could be the difference between your pedals hitting the floor versus you stopping the vehicle in an emergency situation or on track use. Please like the video if you found it helpful. Comment if you have any questions or would like to discuss something. And please subscribe so you don't miss the track impression video in the future.